Wow, Caleb Plant destroys hometown opponent. He had a hometown fight. Fagan Boots. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Let's jump right into it. Also, sign up for ESPN Plus below using my link. It does help the channel. You can bundle it with Disney Plus, ESPN Plus, and Hulu. One price, $12.99 for all three. Now, congrats to friend of the channel, Caleb Plant. And I've been telling y'all about him for a while on my channel. I believed in him way before he became a champion and interviewed him, these types of things. And I must say, Caleb Plant looks sweet. You know, he has a great apt nickname, Sweet Hands. Now, I'm a realistic boxing critic. I understand that he wasn't in there with David Benavidez or Caleb Smith. And rightfully so. I think he had a tough schedule. Like, he just became a champion, if I'm not mistaken, last year in January. He fought a respected guy who beat Durrell. And that was uh, Jose Uzcategui. And he dropped him, I want to say twice I was at that fight in L.A. He dropped him, beat him. Then he had a fight on the Pacquiao Thurman card against a guy coming down in weight from, I believe, 175 or something. And came down to 168. Chopped him up. Mike Lee. He was real confident that he could do something with Caleb. And it's the top of the year, and he got a hometown fight. It looked like a great crowd. So this is, um, I'm, I'm loving this, what PBC is doing about, you know, they're just really building people, building stars, building people, and this is how it starts. Like, Caleb Plant, he's from Texas. I mean, excuse me, he's from Tennessee. He got the down south swag, and it gives the opportunity for people near people he grew up with old classmates old co-workers whatever to get the opportunity to see him and i'm sure the fighters appreciate that and caleb didn't disappoint listen i can't really say much about fame butts i didn't really know much about him going into the fight it was kind of a showcase fight with a it was a puncher now this is the thing that me being a student of the game respecting boxing that is impressive i feel like a lot of people sleep on this very fact when you're fighting a, a guy who's reported as a big puncher, then that means they are going to be a danger to you for as long as the fight. You have to find ways, creative ways to discourage them, to zap some of that energy, to get them to slow down. Because if it's a guy with power to rock you and they can set this up with few shots, single shots and stuff, then they're always a danger to you. So this is where the sweet science comes in. Caleb Plant was dominating Fane Butts, right? He was dominating him. Early rounds, there were no knockdowns or anything, but he was just dominating. Beautiful body work, excellent piston jab, fast jab. The speed was really troubling his opponent. And he was lacing up and stringing up some very creative combinations, very fluid with his work. It was second nature. He was swift in there. And that's how the whole fight was. But there were a couple moments i want to say the fight ended in the 10th round i want to say round maybe seven and eight right around there where caleb plant he looked like he slowed up just a little bit and that's what happens people get flat you, your body naturally gets tired and this is where the sweet science comes in because despite dominating the guy for the first five six rounds hurting him um rocking him a couple times things like that you have to when you're dealing with the puncher not necessarily if you're dealing with someone who can't hurt you but definitely if you're dealing with someone who's supposed to be a noted puncher especially if they're a noted puncher that has no name because you're not trying to make someone a celebrity overnight so the impressive thing is you have to put it all together it requires a balance a balance of conditioning like you can't look beautiful in the first half of the fight and then get tired because the puncher what they need to get back in the fight is to hurt you to land a, a single shot you know to jump right back in it and Caleb Plant didn't allow that but it, it was good to see his conditioning his work with Larry Wade and you know his work ethic and his ideology of staying in shape year round and not really getting fat in between fights it pays off because he he was very active and very busy and he kept a good pace but I, I would say around round five six seven eight right around there he started to 
get a little bit flatter. Like, you know what I'm saying? He flattened out a little bit, maybe from fatigue and just from being active and lacing up so many punches. And Fain Butts was losing those rounds, but the best work he did was probably in a few of those rounds, like where he landed anything. There was one moment where Fain Butts landed a, a good jab and it actually bloodied Caleb Plant's nose a little bit. Um, Caleb Plant also bloodied Fain Butts' nose viciously to the point where it looked broken. Um, Caleb Plant is a real life problem, but I really appreciate the sweet science. Like I said, your conditioning has to be on point because the puncher, if he's one dimensional like this dude, He's not more skillful for the, for you, but if he's durable and he has single shots that can hurt you, you got to be switched on for the duration. This was a championship fight, so if you as long as he's standing and the the fight's still going on, you can't you can't uh, lose comfort concentration. You can't um, have mental lapses because the moment you do with the puncher, then boom, could be lights out. And it's funny because like an example, they were promoting the Wilder Fury fight obviously that's a different fight because it's two elite fighters two of the heavyweight best fighters versus this was you know an elite champion versus some guy we hadn't really heard of but it's still the same of what i'm saying like what i'm saying is the same tyson fury i don't think he looked as nice as caleb plant but he was boxing pretty good and he got dropped in the ninth round he got dropped and knocked unconscious that he admits in the 12th round so that's case in point you have to be switched on against a puncher for 36 minutes if it's a 12 round fight and Caleb Plant was able to do that and by the ninth round I believe it was Caleb Plant it looked like it was about to get stopped he was he came out and he started bodying feign butts and this happens this happens for different reasons Caleb was you know using good activity very very good volume stringing up combinations head body head body he was doing this all night so maybe he got a second wind it could have been an issue where you're getting tired so you're like man i'm just gonna lay it on this dude i gotta lay him on because i'm not trying to keep going round after round or after round so sometimes you see in fights people get to that halfway mark and they they fatigue and they get a little bit more lethargic so it becomes more of a phone booth fight and that's kind of what we've seen you know, I think for whatever reason, Caleb stood his ground a lot more, got a second wind or whatever. Or maybe he just said, I got to get this guy out of there because he's durable. And I'm not, you know, you don't get paid by the hour. So Caleb started putting it on him in round nine. His nose was looking busted. He was staggering. He was falling into ropes. He was getting hit with some stupid shit. You really could have stopped it in round nine. But for whatever, it was a title fight. So his, his team didn't want to do it. And then it was just more child abuse in, in round 10. Caleb Plant looked absolutely devastating and sensational in the 10th round. Um, I love his punch variation and creativity. He's getting better. He's getting more creative. Upstairs, downstairs, upstairs, jab, jab. Like, he, he was just mixing it up, and he was turning this dude to mincemeat. And the ref just stopped it. And I, I think it was a bit, to, to be honest, I don't think the ref should have had to stop it. I think it was a bit negligent on behalf of fame butts corner like i understand you do, he lost every single round and to me they should have definitely stopped it his corner should have threw in the towel so these corners and team bro i'll fire if, if i was getting chopped up like that i'll fire everybody on my team you you allowing this to keep going like that because you shouldn't leave it to the fighter to make the decision because they could i'd rather uh, you know ain't no fighter wants to be labeled a quitter yeah, and he was just getting tore up bro so Caleb Plant looked beautiful and I, I don't think he was gonna quit he's a fighter you know so he was too durable and too strong for his own good but he was out of his depth you know it was what it was and he wasn't showing enough signs of life to the point where we needed to see anything more and, you know it's like he wasn't doing enough he was losing every round you know even the rounds where I told you rounds seven eight ish he landed a couple cool things, but not, nothing crazy, you know? And he just didn't, he wasn't ready for him. He was inexperienced. Caleb Plant looked good. Moving forward, um, awesome performance by Caleb Plant, but I put it in perspective. He was against a guy I didn't really know too much about and hadn't really fought out of Germany. So it was a great hometown showcase. I would like to see Caleb Plant continue to move the needle forward. Great title defense for him in front of his hometown crowd. Caleb Smith or David Benavides, I gotta see those fights. Cause those are different fights, different animals, different, 
you know, size guys, more experience, champions. We got to see them unifications. It's, it's very apparent that Caleb Plant is sweet in there, and he's just getting better. He's, he's a real problem at 168. Now, I will say this. Off of that performance, I don't see Canelo fighting Caleb Plant. I really don't. You know, I, I hope I'm wrong, but i seen some headline or rumor about Canelo and Oscar want to fight Caleb Plant or something of this effect. But the way Caleb was looking, that hasn't been the trend that I've seen from Canelo to fight people coming off of performances like that. It would be a beautiful fight at 168. Canelo only has one fight at 168, one at 175. So if they can make it happen, make it happen. But Caleb, he was moving and he was just doing too much that I don't think Canelo would like that style. Again, that American style is Canelo's biggest kryptonite. If, you, if you're in Canelo's wheelhouse, like Golovkin, if you have this European style, if you're a rock'em sock'em robot, you know, James Kirkland and Gulo come forward all or nothing, you're going to get beat up by Canelo, you know? Unless you got like some wilder power and you just can catch him with single shots that take him out of here. But um, yeah, Caleb Plant, his variety, his, his thinking brain. You know, I really like little subtle things when I watch Caleb Plant. He was doing some like sweet stuff, like some Roy Jones-esque things. I look at Caleb Plant's eyes and look at the hand and eye coordination, see where his eyes are and then see where he'll, he'll shoot the jab. Um, he varies his jab, punch variety is on point. He varies his speed, very good speed, footwork, doesn't head hunt only, but he'll tear you up at the head. He threw it, it was just a it was a stellar performance, like for all things considered for who he, he was in there with. And um, you know, the guy's alleged attributes, he just chopped the man up. So that he did what you're supposed to do against that level of competition because like, you know, I'm not trying to kick a man while he's down, but Julian J. Rock Williams, I, I think he's a great boxer. But he fought Rosario, who was also an unknown puncher that had been stopped before, just like this fame bus guy. And he got stopped by the guy. And I think some of that was J-Rock's game plan. He, he kind of approached it like the same exact way he did Hurd. But this dude had some variance into his style that Hurd didn't have. And, you know, it just made for a different fight. Caleb Plant fought a smart fight, a brilliant fight. He didn't get... Um, become victim of the hometown hijinks where you're trying to do too much for your crowd and like i said there's always an element of danger when you're fighting a guy who has punching power because he's just trying to get himself back in the fight and if you're pretty durable then you know you're in the fight with single shots potentially so all-star performance caleb plant i would like to see him keep pushing forward yeah, he, he just he really abused the man i think it could have got stopped a lot longer i was saying it should have been stopped in the first four or five rounds, I said, like, they should give him a couple rounds. He just, he lost the fame butts. He was tough, durable, lost every round, though, you know. And you don't really want to do that to your fighter. You don't want to spoil your fighter and give him nightmares and stuff long term when you could just pull them out of there when they're clearly out of their 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 element right now. Um, a side note, J Jack Reese was the ref for another fight, and I thought he... There was one second left and he stopped the fight. Yeah, I thought that was really weird. Really weird decision for that. And um, the guy was winning the fight and he stopped it with one second because he didn't like the, the response time or the, the little, his leg buckled a little bit too much for Jack Reese, which was weird because Tyson Fury's eyes were rolling in the back of his head and he allowed that fight to continue against a menacing puncher like Wilder. So I think Jack Reese has been having some blunderous calls, like, you know, even Charlo Harrison. I'm not mad at the stoppage, but I think that Harrison fight got stopped at a weird spot after an additional knockdown, and it could have been stopped when Charlo was bobbling his head up with uppercuts, and Jack Reese didn't stop it right then and there. He waited till like, Harrison was getting bullied on the ropes, but blocking some of the shots, and then he picked that time to stop it plus the ksi logan paul point deduction you know it's just a lot of controversial um decisions from jack reese lately so i don't i don't look to see him be the ref of wilder versus fury too he's a good dude but i think he's been making some off calls lately but shout out to caleb plant let me know what you guys think 168 you know is getting is getting stacked you still got jean pascal you got marcus brown 
You got Badu Jack. I, I don't know if he would fight Badu Jack because they kind of roll in similar circles out of Las Vegas. They both have Larry Wade, you know, as strength and conditioning, so they probably wouldn't fight. But maybe Marcus Brown or Jean Pascal. We'll see. Caleb Smith, David Benavides. Those are some real good fights. Like I said, Canelo, but I don't think Canelo want want a guy with the style of Caleb Plant because you know he can get on his bike. He could buy. He just he just he's a complete fighter. Period. Hand speed, speed varies the speed. He has respectable power. You got to respect his power. The shots are flashy. Like have your head rocking up. Accuracy. Very very good fighter in this Caleb Plant. Let me know what you guys think. New media. If you love what I'm doing, smash the like button. We working. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.